Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you. The text that we're going to consider this morning for the message comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verses 20 through 35. And Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him. For they were saying, he is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, he is possessed by Beelzebul. And by the prince of demons, he casts out the demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods, unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house." Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him and they said to him your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you and he answered them who are my mother and my brothers and looking about at those who sat around him he said here are my mother and my brothers whoever does the will of God he is my brother and sister and mother this is the gospel of the Lord I start by giving just a little bit of context This obviously is early in Jesus' ministry. He's been going about Galilee, proclaiming the kingdom of heaven and saying that the prophecies of Daniel and Isaiah and the other prophets are coming to pass in him. And he is already gaining a large following of people who see him as the promised Messiah. But many are unsure, including his own family at this point. It says that his family right now are not real sure about Jesus. In fact, they think he might be crazy. And others are just adamantly against him. That includes the scribes and the Pharisees, who see what he's doing, these miracles and these casting out of demons, and say he only does this by the power of of the devil himself, that he is possessed by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, and this is how he casts out demons. Well, Jesus says that doesn't make any sense. Why would the devil be against himself? A house divided and and against itself can't stand. Neither could the devil. Rather, he says, I've come to cast the devil out. And in order to do that, in order to to plunder a strong man's house, you have to come in and bind the strong man. And then you can plunder his house. What is he talking about here? He's talking about the world. The rule of this world was handed to Adam and Eve, but they lost it through sin and doubt, disbelief and became slaves of the devil. And the devil is the one who took over rule of this earth. And he's called the prince of this earth. If you remember Jesus being tempted in the desert, the devil himself tempted Jesus with all the kingdoms of the world, for they were his to tempt Jesus with. But Jesus had come to take possession of all the kingdoms of the world and to make them his own. 
And he wasn't about to bow to Satan in order to do it. He had a plan, and his plan was to come into the world and to bind Satan and to keep him from deceiving the nations any longer. And it's about the message that he's proclaiming, the message of the kingdom and the further message of his grace and forgiveness that would come through the cross. This is the message that would take over the world. And nothing could stop it because Jesus bound Satan from being able to, to do anything to stop this message. For it's the message that, that, that brings people to faith. As they hear the word, it penetrates their hearts and, and creates faith in them so that they believe in Jesus this was all prophesied in Revelation 20. And the ancient historical church has always said that through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his ascension into heaven, that the power of Satan was bound by Jesus' death on that cross. And that following his resurrection, the word has been able to go out and it's unrestrained by Satan because he himself is restrained. And the word is taking over and it's penetrating the hearts of people all around the world. Listen, before Jesus, the only people who believed and trusted in God were, were a small nation. And even, even among them, there was disbelief. Only a remnant truly believed. But now, people believe and trust in God and in Jesus Christ all over the world. Two and a half billion people claim to be Christians in the world. Now, we know that not everybody who says they're Christian actually is and has faith. But there was a time when there were only eight people of faith on the face of the earth. Remember the story of Noah and the ark. Eight people who believed. And now post Jesus and the cross, faith covers the face of the earth. This is because Jesus has come and he has bound Satan so that he can no longer deceive the earth and that the truth can come out and it can make people believe. And I use those words carefully because that's precisely what the Bible says God does. In Psalm 22, David says, You made me believe when I was at my mother's breast. You made me trust in you. And God makes us all trust in him through the power of his word. When that message of the cross penetrates us, it creates faith in us. We do nothing, for it is a gift of God that we believe and trust in him. Many people, you say, don't believe. Well, what's happened to them? Well, God has poured out his spirit upon all flesh. And he convicts people of their sin. And, and at the same time, he is moving by the power of his Holy Spirit to bring the gospel message to all people. But people still have the ability to refuse the work of the Holy Spirit. They can abort any work that it does in them. And that's what they were doing here in this text. The Holy Spirit was working even then on the hearts of the scribes and Pharisees, but they were so resistant that they called good evil, and they rejected the work of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, this alone is the unforgivable sin. That is, the Holy Spirit tries to penetrate your heart and create faith that you absolutely resist it and abort every effort that it makes to create new life 
in you. This alone is the unforgivable sin. This is what our church believes, teaches, and confesses as the unforgivable sin, the, the, where the human will stands in the way of God's will and God's action to bring us to faith through the power of the Holy Spirit and to stand up and to resist it to the point that we refuse to believe no matter what efforts God has taken. We have that right. And people, I will tell you, hell is the absence of God and his love and mercy, but it is not because he has not offered it to us. It's because we steadfastly refuse it. All those who go to hell have desired it and called it upon themselves. And I've said this before, and I hope that you understand it. There is no lid on hell. The people who are there do not repent. They are not sorry. They continue to resist all efforts of God until he finally says enough. I've done everything I can to bring you to faith, but you've resisted it all. Your will be done. Now, for those of us who believe, it is because we have succumbed to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. As he has brought the word of God to us in our pain and in our anguish over our sin, when the Holy Spirit has convicted us of sin and we realize that we have hurt the people that we love the most over and over and over again, and realize what kind of sinners we are, that's when the message of the cross is allowed to come to us and we hear the message of grace and forgiveness and mercy that Jesus has taken upon himself all sin, not just our sin, but the sin of the whole world. It's all been paid for by God, and we are set free of all guilt because of him. In the moment that we hear those beautiful words, we grab hold of them because they mean life to us and forgiveness because otherwise we are in our sins eternally. Because we know what we've done and how we failed in the things that we've done and the things that we failed to do. But Jesus, by his death and resurrection, has set us free. This is eternal life and it begins the moment that we believe. But eternal death occurs when we resist by our human will every effort of the Holy Spirit to bring us to contrition and faith in what he's done for us. And finally, in this text, we are reminded of who the family of God really is that it is the people who ultimately do the will of the Father. And when we come to faith, having received mercy, having been exposed to the Holy Spirit and seen our sin and what we've done to others and what we've failed to do, and then are, are exposed to the gospel, which says that we are, we are forgiven in Christ Jesus who paid the penalty for all sin and we are given this mercy and this grace, then we turn and do the same for others, which is the will of God in our lives. This is what he calls us to do. This is what Christianity is. It's being forgiven. It's being shown mercy by God. 
and then turning around and doing the same for others and not holding people's sins against them, but forgiving them in your heart. And, and for people who are unrepentant, turning them over to the Lord, knowing that the Lord wants to bring everybody to the knowledge of the truth and to save them, and that he does this by the power of his Holy Spirit and his word. But for us, our job is to be merciful to those that God puts in our path because he has been merciful to us. And all who believe in him and trust in his name are given the right to be called children of God and we are a part of his family. And we know that we, are, we remain in his family as we continue to show mercy to others as he has shown to us. Oh, there's a lot in this text. Some of the biggest questions in the universe are, are touched in this text. I hope the word of God richly blesses you this morning. Hear the word today and believe. Amen.